I don't want to be known as a producer. I don't want to go out and, ah, tell us, what do you used to make? No. Ask me about chops. Add it up. Welcome to Conversations with Friends. My guest today is Grammy award-winning songwriter and producer, Tells, Tellsy Baby, on the streets known as Punkila, Bonkila, Pongila, Funkila, Funkila. <laughs> Can you see how painful that was for him? That's all I know. Funkila, Funkila. I feel like there should be an applause for me. I have. <laughs> Can you guys see that he's already stressed me out from the start? But I'll allow him because as you guys can see, the activity for today is cooking. So Tell is going to be cooking for me. Do you know that as I'm doing this intro now, I'm deep in that you're the first man in my life to cook for me. Can I, can I not be the first man? Why do you feel stressed about being the first man to cook for me? Because I don't like... Never mind. You don't like cooking for what? Never mind. Never mind. Tell is going to be cooking today and I'm very excited to eat and talk about his journey so far. If for whatever reason, maybe you've been sleeping under a rock, you don't know who tells this, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yeah. So, take it away. I make beats sometimes, but like I, you know, I'm a chef, I cook, international, local. I'll say my United troll. That's the party I've not said, but we'll get into that. Yes. We'll get into that. Yes, actually. We'll get into that. All right. I'm hungry. You're hungry? Yeah. We're gonna eat. Oh yeah, let, oh yeah, start. Get up so we can start your whole process. Yes, let's help you. Let's start with avocados. Hmm. Love yeah. this. Can you cut the avocados? No, I, I'm not. Anything. You said anything I need. Like, for example, you said I should fix this thing in here. I didn't That's even say to do that. Let's start with baby tells. What did you want to be when you grew up? I never knew. Mm. I just thought about that right now that I never knew, like, in secondary school, guys used to have, like, I just say, oh, I want to be a pilot and be yeah. a doctor. I'm just like, ah. How do you guys come up with these answers? Like, I'm not really... You didn't really gravitate towards anything? Before I answered, I have a problem with the Nigerian like, things. Produce in general, the quality. Like... It's stressing you out. But we can make you work, Abby. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I used to... I used to be scared that, like, I would... Not have anything. Not have anything. No yeah, and I would, yeah, yeah, I had like a little bit of that university. And then um, in 2011, I had this my friend beating me. Mm. He came back to school with his brother's beats, and I used to drum. That's how I used to get beats in secondary school. <laughs> and then, um, and then he came like one day, well, one time with his brother's beats, and then everyone was like, "Wow, this is crazy!" Blah blah blah. And then me, I'm just like, "Oh shit." I drum as well, so I should be able to make this. And then um, I just like making beats. Mm. So at first, you... at first, I thought it wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah, because like, at that point, I was like, at first of all, I, I didn't have a laptop. I didn't know anything about producing, anything, I didn't know anything about music. So I just thought, um, it was, this is taking so long, this is so annoying. You're fine. What would you say growing up was like? I Man, growing up wasn't cool. Mm. I was like obviously like my like my parents gave me like um the best the best they could they yeah. could yeah but like I grew up life? yeah I have to I have a younger brother and I have an older brother what was you guys dynamic like growing up um I was black sheep <laughs> like literally I'm the youngest no I'm like the middle, the middle. but like literally mm, like, I'm, the, I'm the only yeah, like parallels are killing me continue dark skin person in my family oh really yeah so I'm literally like how how did that happen. I have no idea. Genetics. My mom used to beat me so bad. So I used to, like, like sometimes I would tell her like, it's because I'm the only black person, blah, blah, blah. So like, I used to feel like I was adopted. Oh. Yeah. But now I just realized that she was just hard on me because I was troublesome. Yeah. Yeah, I was. And now you're, you're just troublesome to a different demographic. I am. 
I don't know what you mean. Okay, that's interesting. That I'm not going to say, say that. that. I'm not going to um, say. I'm not are going you to say. your brothers close? Would you say? Yeah, my little brother is. I call him my son. Mm. Cause um. Like, I mean, my mom is not around anymore. Yeah. So, I try to take care of him the best way I can. Yeah. And my older brother, is my guy. You know. As you just mentioned, you lost your mom in 2014. Uh -huh. May her soul rest in peace. In what ways do you think that impacted you? Slash how you navigate life? Slash your understanding of life? I feel like, as a man, Yeah. Um, something has to happen for you to realize that you're a man, not a boy anymore. Mm. That was what woke me up. Because mm. I was failing in uni, I won't lie. Mm. Yeah, I was failing. But like, when she died, I just, just knew that you were like, you things have to change you. Yeah. Speaking of uni, you attended Backup University. What was that experience like? Hey! <laughs> what was that experience like? Right. And um, why accounting? I know you said the accounting at university. Why accounting? And did you even do any studying at all? Let's just answer all of those. First of all, I did. Mm. I did accounting because I failed it in secondary school and I wanted to pass it in uni. Okay. I don't like failing. Yes, I hope you guys can see what motivates this. Yeah. I hate feeling. E, um, if you guess what we're making, China says she will give you guys five thousand dollars. Between me and Tails, only one person has five thousand dollars in their bank accounts, and the name starts with T. No problem. Aha, that's not my real name. <laughs> eh, the name for this purpose is we're going to your real name. But you no, know, anyways, as we were saying before, I was interrupted by this chef apparently of local okay. and international dishes. International and local. We we'll start with that one first. International first. We're talking about Tails, one killer, right? <laughs> So, um, tells like a brother to me, and you know, I actually his talent, and this sort of like interest in cooking is <laughs> kind of cute, but um, wow, I don't know how to cook In what ways, if any, do you think that experience shaped you? It did not shape me in any way. Um, I feel like. What was the experience like? Backup is a terrible school. Mm. I've seen it everywhere. Like, I mean, mm. I'm done, so nothing can happen. Yeah. Um, because they believe in, like, they believe in, like, holier than thou, but they are so terrible. Just hypocrisy, basically. Yeah, like, they, like for example, they say there's no chicken, fish allowed. But one well, how day, is that religious? I'm confused, let me tell sorry. you what's crazy. One day I was walking into, like, one of their, like, offices, and I saw Mr. They're Big's truck. chicken and fish. What like, yo, like, that this experience really stuck to you. I won't like that thing. That thing, that thing pain, this was in my third year old, and it pained me. Mm. My third year was 2013, 2014. Why accounting? Oh, yeah, because, um, like I said, I wanted to pass, even though I didn't really pass. Yeah, I mean, I came out with it too. So. Well, uh, I'm not really ashamed of that. Like, I like, because at the end, like, I knew that I wasn't going to be. Because you, I what was your first job ever? Never, you never guess. I Mega definitely chicken. won't. Mega chicken. Because I tried to find it. Mega chicken. No, I need you to look into the camera. I have a whole last LinkedIn. You know, if you check me, check Ali or Dora. I you tell us, what were you doing in the mega kitchen? Like you were in the kitchen? No. Making I was an auditor. See, so the accounting. At that point, I wanted to make money. Yeah. Because I wanted to buy clothes. And it was summer like 2016. Yeah, and the check they gave me, I was like, eh. I think it was like, nah, I can't say it. Well, it was, it was nice, it was like, yeah. It, it was, was a good check. Yeah, it was a good check. Check, auditing a mega chicken, check it out. You need to check it out, so. There's this thing in packs, drum packs, drum, just packs, like external packs, basically. So, FL Studio, what used to make beats. Mm, this, this is the sound. Okay. This is the sound, right? There mm -hmm. are sounds inside there, and but like, sounds. they're not that good. So okay. obviously people make like stuff with like external packs. Yeah. Right. I didn't know what external packs were. Yeah. Until like three years after. So like in my head I wasn't good enough. Mm. So like and I didn't have friends that were producing. Yeah. So I would always just make this and I'm like, ah, I'm not good, I'm not good, and then I'll just stop. Yeah. But I started taking it more seriously in um, twenty fifteen. Yeah. Because my mom my mom died in twenty fourteen. And then I scammed my dad. I'm sorry. I scammed him um, like, to buy a laptop because I didn't have a laptop. Because before, I had this flash drive. 
So I would take my flash to different people's laptops, you know, my FLCA setup and parts and be like, bro, can I use the laptop for like two hours? I install FL Studio, make beats, or install FL Studio, yeah. send the instruments. Guys always think that like when you're on a level, like things were so easy before. For like, sure. Yeah. Which is a big part of doing this show. I really want people to get into that. I mean you kind of touched on this, but I will still ask it. You've decided, okay, production, this is what you want to do professionally. Mm -hmm. What would you say was the biggest hurdle, or what would you say were your biggest hurdles in terms of making that a reality? Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Yeah. Meaning what? You're living above your means? <laughs> I'm being no, 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 no. I feel like um, as a producer, there's yeah. a certain way you have to be. I have to wear my shades now. Wear my shades. Tell us how to wear shades to cut onions, you no, guys. No, 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 no. If artist, you're not cutting the onion, okay. Artist to peel it. At, no, please, we're not doing that. Artist packaging. If we're only bringing out the shades for onions, we're not bringing it out for packaging. Okay, no problem. Can I have the shades, please? Are you ready? I'm ready. When you finish peeling it, I'll be with you. Let me just touch, please. You know Should I wear it for you? Because your hands are already on your knee. I don't like when women do things for me. It's okay. I've done See, it for you. You, you, didn't you, you, you. you didn't do well. Calm you down. Didn't. I don't feel humble. You don't feel humble? As we're saying, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, you feel, do you feel fine? Yeah, no, no. Okay. Humble. I told you I'm going to wear shades with him in solidarity. Well, why are you wearing shades? You're not even cutting with me. Yeah, for solidarity. No problem. I feel like producers like have to be a certain way. That's how I feel. Don't like, don't think so. No problem. Mm. You just know a producer. But me, like, I, I, like, I love the good life. I don't want to be known as a producer. I don't want to go out and ah, deals. What do you use to make? No. Ask me about chops. You know, so like good life. Don't be, don't be stressing me. So like, ask me about like, chops. Yes, now. So like, I just. First of all, I had to like start making producer friends. Cause yeah. first of all, in my head, I already thought that producers were not that like in tune with my lifestyle. Cause you know, everyone is so, so serious. So you need to explain. Okay, hey, your playful so personality. I'm not, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I, no problem. You want to? Um, you don't have a playful personality. <laughs> yeah. For example, um, I think my first proper producer friend I can remember is London. Yeah, it was really cause. And I just started making more friends and then, yeah. But normally, like, there's this industry of, like, artists, producers. And, like, I'm not really there. For yeah. example, if I walk into a room, people might not know that I am who I am. Yeah. Until someone says, Fun Killer. Yeah. First of all, I love that because, Fun. you know what, no problem. Fun Killer. Fun Killer. Fun killer. Mm. Anything you want to call it. As long as they shall give that tag. No problem. They know what time it is. Yeah. You decided you went to take production seriously um, in about 2018. And then you moved to, you're in Lagos, you're staying all over the place. You stayed in Osapa, you stayed in Ogudu, Oniru. Hmm, let me tell Just you moving that. around. That's, that's what a is the, story. Yes, I want you to go into that story. And I want at the end of that to tell us your favorite place that you lived in and the worst place that you lived in and why. So get into the story. The worst place I lived in is definitely um, Yanapaja. Yeah, that place is ha. Mm. Wow, that's where my dad actually built his house. Fair enough. I left there like twenty. I left there when my mom died. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Okay. Yeah. Um. Cause first of all, getting an Uber from there is is, Crazy. is almost impossible. Yeah. There's no one there. Mm -hmm. Like no one in like, I would say like my. The circles that you yeah. need to go where you're trying to go. Yeah, for sure. like the closest like. Like my closest friend was in Ikeja. Yeah. And like it was just like, what am I doing here? So you left so there and went where first? I went to my cousin's side of Aja. From Aja, I went to a new restaurant I was staying in Loji. With Loji, okay. From a new road, I went to Ogudo. From Ogudo, I went to Osapa. Mm. From Osapa, I was staying with Pachamanki for a couple, for like a month. I'm just trying to break down the places you've moved around to. Oh, exactly, you're moving and you were moving oh. and staying with different producer friends or artists. just people, artists, artists. Yeah. artists. Okay, so more artists. Yeah. yeah. So you're working with um, just different artists at different periods of time based mm -hmm. on where you were staying. Mm -hmm. would you, how would you say that impacted your sound, your work, how you approach work? It's actually very good because you, when you, and that's why right now, like, I'm, I'm even looking for, like, new artists to work with yeah because when you um when you work with different people it helps your creativity like mm -hmm. you don't 
like you can make a variety of things yeah because you're working with one person you're going to make one thing one yeah. type of sound you're not going to make there's nothing going to be special yeah yeah about what you're doing you just mentioned working with loje and i was watching one of his interviews and he was saying when he first moved back to nigeria and decided to start doing music seriously you guys were in the studio a lot he said thames used to come around to the studio a lot as well i'm sure there are many other people that come around that i don't even know but just those two seeing the astronomical rise of those two people and having played a part in their journey how has that been to witness you know as someone that played a part in the journey but also just as a fellow creator uh -huh. um that's very exciting like mm. Luigi is just like we used to fight a lot. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah, but like, you know, he's always going to be my brother. Yeah. And um, we always knew he was good. Yeah. Was just like the exposure. Yeah. You know, we are, we were hustled. 2021. Jesus. No, 2019. 2019, yeah. Because I was going to talk hmm. about that next. 2019 was deep. Who but else like, used to come around the studio that we didn't know? We said Luigi, we said Tim. Would you? Um, Would you? Um, Teams, no Teams, Teams. Bad boy Teams. Yeah. Mm. Teams, like me. Um, we had we're staying in this place in the new record. Never mind. But our room was t like two or two, so like it was like a day in room two or two. Room two or two. Mm. Yeah, me, Boo Boo, Uncle Boo Boo, me, Boo Boo, Loji. We're not staying together. Me, yeah. Loji, and Boo Boo were staying together, but like everyone together, me, Boo Boo, Loji, like me, Buju, Teams. I was watching an interview you did on Legit TV, oh. and you're talking about 2019, thinking of quitting producing and going back to accounting, because yeah. obviously you're having a tough time. And uh -huh. one of your friends from Ghana, Kovi, came and introduced you to Dio, which led to all good. I just Smells so good. <laughs> which led to obviously you and Dio having a relationship, which led to waiting you smoke. Then. Another of your friends telling you about a production camp. You went there, you saw a bunch of your friends there, which led to Buju asking you to follow him to Bernard's house, which led to obviously you producing five tracks on Twice as Tall. So I'm just like, what is really interesting about your journey is there's so much of your people putting you on. Yeah. Like obviously you being ready for the opportunities, but there's so much of people taking you into rooms they had access to before you had access. How would you say that has impacted you and how you navigate this journey? I feel like the question should be, how has it uh, impacted them? Have you? I'm joking, I'm joking. Never mind, you don't need to explain that. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, I feel like I'm a likable person. Mm -hmm. Like I have that, um, you didn't agree. Moving no on. No problem, no problem. No I said, um, mm -hmm. uh, what do you want me to say? No. Oh my God, yeah, like, Charles, oh my God, you're yes. so likable. Yes. You know what, never mind. No, uh, no problem, Mitchell. Hey. Don't put onions in your eye. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, just, so from, like, from that, I just realized that um, being that person, I'm not necessarily people pleaser, but like, I like to be a good person to an extent, so. I see that that really like helps Pays me. off. Yeah. Yeah. It really helps me, you know, out with connections. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, me, Bernard Boy, you're playing him a couple of beats. The final beat you're playing, which he likes, ends up becoming naughty by nature, which is insane and an absolute banger. Mm -hmm. um, what was your first session in the studio with Bernard like? Like, where was your mind at? What were you feeling? What was that moment like? I was scared. Mm -hmm. Yes, because like at the time this was like Can you taste this? Wow. Are you going to give your guest a taste or not? Not this. This was like born up from like Grammy nomination. This was Coachella. This was like and that was just a nigga. It's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So like obviously, um, I was tense, but he was just there. And that's 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 what's in there. So I was like, yo, bro, say something, move one way. And then Buju, I think Buju left for I think I think he went to buy food or something. Then uh, we just started talking and then 
You see that? Oh shit! This guy, this guy is a normal nigga like any other nigga. Yeah. And then um, I just stopped being scared, of course. Mm. And um, at first I was, and that's 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 something I learned from working with him. I was playing beats that I thought he would like. Mm. But he wasn't liking any of them. I just started playing anything, and it was not like in, in every other one I was playing. Like I never imagined playing Naughty by Nature for Bonner. Huh? Uh, what kind of music do you listen to growing up, and how would you say that has influenced your sound? It's not influenced my sound. But what kind of music do you listen to? I used to say I didn't like Nigerian Stop music. Stop boom texting. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say I didn't like Nigerian music. Imagine I, that. Yeah. <laughs> I was so saying, cool. I was saying, Nigerian music was rise. I won't lie to you, like that's that's what I used to say, but like, mm. there's no other genre better than Afrobeats right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you listen to a wide variety of music mm -hmm. in terms of genres and sounds, mm -hmm. and that obviously has a huge influence on your beats, your own sound. How else do you think your work stands out? Sound selection. Mm. I take time. Yeah. With my sounds, cause. I don't know how to play the keyboard. Okay. So I know how to drum. So I always yeah. make sure that my um, first of all, I can. People always there's this thing that producers do that. Like I, I, I don't know why they do it. Like someone ask you, oh, like how long do you take to make this beat? And everyone is always eager to say, oh, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Mm. But that's not that's not really like perfection. Yeah. You don't really have to be perfect, but like you don't need to. Like no one is dragging time. Yeah. Yeah, so you, like for me like I can use like an hour to look for one sound. Mm. Cuz at the end like it has to be perfect. I'm not even this is not even like an insult to anyone. It's just I used I used to do it before. Like I used to say, "Oh yeah, 30 minutes I'm done with the beats." But that doesn't really get you anywhere. Yeah. I was watching the breakdown you did for the beats of Wonderful with Native. You said if you're making a beat for 2 hours, you spend an hour 30 on drums. Is that still the case? Yeah. So really? Like, I can't I can't play keys. Mm. So like the one that I can do. You want to finish work well. there. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Very, very well. Speaking of the wonderful beat, you played it for Burner on accident. So you wanted to play another beat called Comb. Yeah. And that you ended was... up playing Cancillo, which became wonderful. Uh -uh. Don't worry, I did my research, it's okay. Uh -uh. <laughs> You know, playing Cancillo, which became wonderful. Yeah. What other, like, mistakes or unexpected things have happened like that that have surprised you on this journey? Abuli. Abuli. Abuli mm. was the last thing I played for Patronkin in that house. Last thing. We had done, like, 10 or, like, yeah, we did a lot of songs. Yeah. A whole lot of songs. Yeah. And then, they were good songs, but, like, I'm like, I'm like, which one is, like, which one is going to make me, like, feel that, oh, yeah, like, You've done something. I've done something. Yeah. And then, so it's 2020. I bully, I think I made the beat. I made it before Fino. <laughs> and when I saw him, I saw him in 2021, I told him, like, bro, do you know that I made a bully for you? And I was like, ah, then go say, no, give me you. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, what do you mean? And that's the thing, like, you never know, like, if you make a beat for someone, you never know who's going to kill it. Yeah. You might think this person might kill it, but like, what Somebody else. Do? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I I played it for him and then I just started like I thought you would have a bully. I'm like, hey. oh shit. Vibe. You're a songwriter as well. Occasionally. Occasionally. What's your creative process for that? Um first of all, no one can be in, in the room. Really? Nobody. Like when I'm like Even the artist that's on the song. If both of us are Yeah, if you guys are yeah, if, okay. there's, if there's a certain connection, then yeah. The synergy is there. Yeah, because I don't like... Is it, do you feel like you're shy about that that part, that part of your skill set? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Mm. Kind of. Mm. But, um... I... You guys guess so. $5,000, remember? $5,000 from who? Huh. Okay, yeah, your government is Ali Odara. So where does where does tells come from? I can never see it. Why? Don't worry that one. Don't worry about that. Never. I can never ever ever see it. How? What do you mean how? How? Not just for my career. How? Let's for your guys career. Guys, do not take me seriously. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. 
I don't know what that means. I feel like, yeah, my brothers know. Um, three other people know, I think. To produce a track that Timberland co-produced is insane in a way I don't have words for. For me, oh, that I'm not even the one that did it. So I'm like, for you, what was that moment like? Like, what was that moment like? How do you not lose your mind? That day, when, when, because, um, I was staying with Bernard. Um, okay. He just texted me with that guy, comes to you. And I got there and then he played it for me. Immediately, I went to my close friends. I said, my life has changed. <laughs> and then, I guess was blind. What happened? What happened? Don't worry, bro. Just, just know that my, my life has changed. for my life. And then, you know, it's crazy because every, people don't have to agree with me, but if not every, most black producers look up to Timberland. Yeah, I think most producers full stop. Like, because the guy is like, his team will come on, like, that's how those guys making beats. Yeah. So, the team will bounce. Yeah. So, um, it was just like, it was just a bit emotional, you know? Mm. It's emotional. <laughs> that is so ridiculous, you guys. Okay, so of course, Timberland. Who are some of your other producing goats, would you say? Sars. For sure. Damn. For sure. For sure. For um, sure. John Bellion. Mm. John Bellion is my favorite artist. Mm. And one of my favorite producers. Mm. Jay Dealer. Um, Prime. I love that boy. Wonder Kid. Vizilikos is my favorite Afrobeat producer. Mm. He's just... Um... That's a lot of It's okay. It's all right. On Bonner's last two projects, you got to work with two of your dream production collabs. That's Jay Huss and Stormy. I know that Coffee is also on that list. Schoolboy Q, Rema. Who else is on your dream list to produce for? John Bellion. He's John Bellion. First person. Mm. That, you, you, know, you know, one day, um, <laughs> I would see what this guy's reaction was, but one day, um, always in the studio, first of all, that's something... I love the boss thing with Bonner. Mm. There's always something like What's going on. There's always something to talk about. There's mm. always something that will bust your head. One mm. day there's always something. Yeah. Every day rather. Mm. Um so gotta say guy 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 come to the studio again. I'm like, uh, what can it be this time? That was on the Zoom call with John Bellion. I'm like, whoa. Like when I tell you that that's my favorite artist, like if you yeah. check my phone. I feel like if you know me, you know this. Yeah, like for everybody sure. Everybody knows, yeah. Yeah. So, like, then I took me there. Like, this is my producer. He's the one that put me onto you. I'm like, oh. Yeah, so. But in my head, it wasn't here, bro. I was like, you're yeah, like, losing yeah, your mind. Like a fanboy moment for me, but, you know. Yeah. Artist packaging. Yeah. <laughs> so, you've learned artist packaging. What else have you learned on I this? I don't like that artist packaging. It's not you that said it. I don't like it, but I have to, because, like, you can't. Just, levels. Yeah. One day I came back from Ghana. One time I came back from Ghana, went straight to the place to eat. Because I was taking my food out, started eating it like before I even paid because I was hungry. Yeah. So I just tapped me. He said, Bro, are you tell us. I'm just trying to eat food, bro. Yeah. At least no one has told you I'm surprised you're not a bitch. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, don't worry. Nobody, nobody will be surprised you're not a bitch. That's reserved yeah. for babes. Huh. <laughs> Having been around a bunch of producers, uh -huh. I find that making a beat is kind of like writing a joke. In the sense that it's never finished, right? You have the first session, you do whatever you do, you come back, you listen again, you listen again, you tweak stuff. Because you're always looking to like elevate what you've done, if that makes sense. Yeah. How do you tell us now when a beat is finished? Um, wow, that's a lovely question. Wow. Mm, thank you. I would wash my hands and clap for you, but I don't want to give clap you Clap like this. I'll give you space. So yeah, clap, yeah, clap. You tell you, make me clap for you. So what, how about your reciprocity? I'm not that kind of guy. So yeah, you got it. Doesn't do it. You guys, everything straight from Chelsea's mouth. Hear it. Too. <laughs> Hear the things from this man's mouth. Anyways, um, thank you. But yeah. Uh, when there's nothing else to put, like when I don't see anything going on, yeah, this is done. When there's just nothing you can. <laughs> I feel like this would be like a good like album. Cover. So, yeah. What, mm. what do you think the album should be called? Chops. Bare bones. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. 
All right, tell us, tell us what you're plating. Um, mm -hmm. Shrimp tacos. Shrimp tacos. Guacamole. Love it. And uh, taco sauce. Mm. Well, you, this is like, this is my own Is the magic, Ooh. I'm telling you. Can't it slaps. Find, can't find this anywhere. Slaps. Anywhere in the world. What would you say production has taught you about people? Um, shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a huge difference between like, like the whole like relationship. Yeah. Like being, if you're working with someone, it doesn't mean the person is your friend. Because mm. when it's time to sign contracts, guys are Start different. Start seeing different things. Yeah, guys are very, very different. Mm. What would you say production has taught you about yourself? I'm lazy. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. But um, when I want to achieve something, you go I, for, you I go, won't be able to stop know. until I achieve it. Yeah. yeah. You said that the session that produced Wonderful, that session was about 10 hours. The 12. Like 12 hours. Yeah. Crazy. Has that been a one-on-one -on -one experience or you've had more experiences like that? Um, um, and describe that session in three words. Stressful, mm. mind-blowing, unbelievable. Mm. I don't think I have actually. I've never Is it one done on a one session. Experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would never do it again. Yeah. You know, because mm. at that time I was just learning how to record. Yeah. So like, I wasn't even... You know, in your bag like you are yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously like I was slow. Because he even said it later on that, like, he was asking Larry, that you, why this guy is slow like this? Because mm. at the time, I just started learning how to um, record on Logic, because yeah. I work on FL Studio. Yeah. And then, obviously, like, the pressure from him as who he is. Yeah. You know, I was trying not to fuck up, I was fucking up big mm. time. You just but mentioned Larry? Simmer down, yeah. Who's obviously someone that you had massive respect for before you guys even had you know the working relationship you have now what has working with him been like um put me on my toes though because mm. Larry, I, mean, I, I said in one interview that Larry, he's like a scientist yeah guy who just come up with something and he's just like ah, bro how mm. like, how are you just like from where to where yeah so like obviously like you have to now be on your toes because like that's the kind of standard that you're that, working with yeah exactly you want a grammy Guy, has like at what point did that sink into your psyche that this is real life? Food? Um, like they happened because mm. I had no idea about anything. Like, my boy, even the day twice I told dropped, he was like, Something, something, Grammy. You know, like, I beg, like, let, let the song, let the album just come Drop out. Come out first, exactly. Yeah, that was just, really, like, pressure um, I wasn't, it. I wasn't really thinking about that. Yeah, but then when down now happened, I'm like, Fuck, like, like, I go to places and guys are like. Grammy winning producer. I'm like, oh fuck, that's me, that's me. Yeah. Where's your Grammy certificate? Hmm. It's in my house. So. Mm. I, I made photocopies for different guys. I see. A couple of my guys. What was your family and I guess really your parents, what was their reaction to you deciding to pursue music professionally? Um, um, I suppose my dad wasn't fucking with you though. Yes, of course. Obviously, not, <laughs> Obviously. I, wasn't, I wasn't really making money. Yeah. So like, this thing that Odin is doing, is it going to bring money? Mm. And then, um, so I think bro just noticed one day that I wasn't asking him for money. Levels have changed. I wasn't asking him for money. He's like, ah, where are you making money? So one day, um, you know, he entered my room. This is when I was still like on the mail. Yeah. He entered my room and I was making, I was making a beat and he, and he closed the door. Oh. And he came back and he was like, ah, are you the one that made that? I said, yeah. And then he had to start calling all his friends. Do you know my son is the best producer? I'm like, bro, chill. <laughs> like, so like from there, he just kind of... Kind of understood like, it yeah, after yeah, having yeah. that experience. Yeah. What, how would you describe your relationship with your dad? And in what ways would you say um, that has impacted you? Um, I never used to like my dad before. Mm. I won't say it, but like, because my dad was strict. So I used to be like, ah, this guy. Yeah. Too difficult. Yeah. But now my dad is like my guy. My dad doesn't even call me my name. He calls him Mr. Tells. I swear. Like, 
he's like the coolest guy in the world right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like my brother. Not yeah. even really like we don't have that relationship where like I this thing looks good. Though. It looks mad. Wow. Um, I need to say something. Yeah, say it. When you are I would say upcoming. Yeah. You're more creative. Yeah. Because like you're not thinking about like the pressure have, is, yeah there's no pressure just yeah. make, you make anything in the world because like you're just trying to vibe i can't like you like i owe you a lot yeah and this is not even hmm. wow <sighs> but this is not even about like any other thing it's just he I really took you under his wing i wasn't anything before like yeah yeah so he could have just said oh who is this guy like a lot of people say that yeah. a whole lot of people i don't yeah. even want to mention him but like popular people like who is this guy blah 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 what does he have why am i working with him big name producer i wasn't that but like deal still like you know took me on that is i don't know Wow, you guys. This is so good. I know what's crazy. This is not even, it's not even because of camera. This is so it's good. It's actually good. This is actually really good, you guys. Which chair is always looking in the eye? Say, mm -mm. Hi, um, Charles. Which is like one of the OGs, the Godfather's thing. Like, like, none of this would be kind of possible without him. Yeah, I love my mood. And it's food is amazing. You've alluded to feeling pressure, obviously, sometimes just based on the levels. They are now at. How do you navigate that? How do you deal with pressure? Talk to my friends. Mm. I try to keep like almost the same friends. Yeah. Because um, you don't see me as in hotels. Mm. Yeah, so like when I feel like a certain way, I just talk to them. Like, oh, yo, this is how I'm feeling. Yeah, feeling, yeah. Just reset my head. Back to it's good they're having good support to system. Me. Yeah. What do you do when you feel creatively stuck? I pause. Mm. And have money, I try. <laughs> yeah. And he I, often does <laughs> have money. <laughs> Because the world is so beautiful mm. and like you don't know how, I feel like people don't know that like the brain, like your brain capacity is not endless. So. Mm. No matter what anyone tells you, one day you're going to like get stuck. So you have to do things to like open your brain. Yeah. Like go around the world. Yeah, for sure. There's so many things to do, so many places to look at. Yes. Yeah, Speaking of travel, what's your favorite place you've been to and why? Uh, down. Florida. Really? Yeah, because it's colorful. That one is for prostitution reasons. No. <laughs> because it's colorful. Mm. Yeah, can I it's just, colorful. Yeah. What, kind, what kind of color? I'm not, I'm not, Yellow, I'm purple. Not, I'm not answering that. I'm not answering that. <laughs> so let me. Hmm. Second favorite place? Um, to be London. Mm, yeah. I like London a lot. Yeah, it's peaceful. Mm. Obviously, a lot of people are going to watch this episode and be very surprised by your love for cooking. You guys. It was crazy. It was in London that I even learned how to cook. That's what I was going to say. Where, where does that come from? Where does the love come from before even... Because, you know, the desire to learn something, there has to be that interest first. I like making things from scratch. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, sometimes it's cool to buy food. But, like, seeing that you can just buy some fucking raw materials and just make a whole ass meal. And you're in control of the taste. If you know what to do, you're in control of how you want your food to taste. Yeah. If you know what to do. Yeah. So interesting. As in, as you talk, I find a lot of parallels in like our thinking. Because I'm like, the whole concept of activity with this show is like, we're talking about journeys. We're going on a journey of making something from scratch. Uh -huh. So it's cool that that's where the cooking comes from. What would you say has surprised you the most on this journey? On oh, my cooking journey? Mm -mm. <laughs> Tell. I'm joking. Tells. I'm joking. Um, people knowing me, I did. I, so that's why, like, I'm never ready for it. Nigga, yeah, I don't tell you that you don't big songs. No, no, yeah, but like, 
I don't do songs to have big songs. I don't it, yes, big but songs. it's a byproduct of that. Fair enough. It's a byproduct of if you do good work and you're doing like, it with visible artists. It's still surprising. Like every time I go out, I mean, like I said, I'm not the most popular guy, but like even if one person knows me, I'm like, ah, for me. No, no, but anyways, I'm the same and I'm less popular than Tell, so. I don't know what yes. you mean. No, you know, you. I'm for sure less popular oh. than you. But I'm saying I'm, I also, I'm also I shocked when people you. recognize me. Heard about me from here. Lies. Lies men tell. On the 10th of August, 2022, you tweeted, I, <laughs> I'm a hater only on weekends. Every other day I show love. How do you balance your career being a hater and a producer? That is a very lovely question. Mm. Um, did you see the panic in his face? It's not that kind oh of show. <laughs> um, I have an account. You have an account. Where I say things. I feel like that account never goes private. I can never have a moment to go from here. So, once the ending, I just go there. Fair enough. Yeah, so, but naturally, I'm a hater. I wake up early mm. so that there's more time to hate on people. Ah, I woke up by 8 a.m. today because of my you. Just to hate. There's so much time. You understand? Know when we're done with this, we're going to another, you know, house. Food. To do more hitting. Ah. And with food in my belly. Hmm. Energy. If you haven't guessed already, it tells a national fan, which is a big red flag, as you guys know for me. But you balance it by appreciating some of my other musical goods that men are normally afraid to say they like, like Harry Styles, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift. Let's talk about Harry specifically. <laughs> Crazy Run, the last three albums. What's your favorite of the last three, album-wise? And what's your favorite song of the last three albums? Um, I don't know the name of the album, but the one that has uh, Watermelon Sugar. Okay. Falling is my favorite song. Mm. Have you heard Sweet Creature? No, I haven't. I'm gonna say, I'll send some stuff uh, So I heard the album. Yeah, the, yeah. And then I, I, I think I picked Fallen, but like I go back to it, but I don't know the song. The song, you, know, you, you just know that you yeah, enjoyed yeah, the vibe. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But Fallen is crazy. No, it's crazy. Sweet Creature is like okay. Fallen on steroids. Oh yeah? Yes. On Can December I... tw 3rd of last ah. year, you tweeted, thank God I have a friend like Saz. Why? Um, Saz is like my, um, what's he called? He's like my therapist. Mm. You see when I said when I'm going through, through stuff. stuff. Yeah, you call your friends. Yeah, yeah Saz is, is on top of that. He, he, always, has a, he always has the right, right thing to, to say. say. Mm. I don't know how, like, he's just always Experience, there. Experience, time. Yeah. He's been doing this for an OG. Shout out to you, Saz. Thank you for all you're doing. Grammy you. nomination. I don't trust you. Everything I'm doing is positive for tell. Look, I'm talking about, talk about Grammy nomination. Why don't you trust me? I don't trust you. Was it a different feeling getting nominated the second time as opposed to the first time? I don't want to sound cocky, but like... Yeah, yeah you're anticipating <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I'm like, of course it's a have one. I swear, like... Fair enough. I even called, so that day, I called Luigi. I'm like, bro, like... I don't feel like posting this thing. Because first of all, I, I suck at social media. So like, I called Luigi. I'm like, bro, should I post? Of course you should. And he's like, are you mad? I said, Literally, are you I mad? Know. I don't know, like, it's not, it's not really, like... It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, they, they, don't, they don't give you money. Obviously, like, it's a lovely thing. It's, it's a big it's, thing. It's groundbreaking. And it's, it's a big thing for a Nigerian. You need to understand that as well. You are one of a very, very few handful of people. Mm -hmm. And producers, come on. It's a different league. It's a different category. So I think it's not the thing in of itself. It's more of what it symbolizes. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're in a very exciting time for Nigerian music globally. How how is it to be a producer at this time? Like how exciting is it? Fantastic. Because mm. more money. Mm. Is there another reason it's fantastic? There's no other reason though. It's money. Yes, no, because like I think the people you you have the opportunity to work with now that like five years ago would have not even been in the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's also that element of it. Which brings money. Yes. But so I'm saying, isn't that other money. element of it enjoyable outside of the money? Wait, am I stubborn? You don't need to ask me that. You already know the answer from a youth. No problem. Um, obviously, like, the range, where, like, yeah. before... And the range of ears that are hearing your work, bruv. It's crazy. 
you see this um you know this Spotify rap thing? Yes. So I'm I gonna talk it. to you about that. Yeah, yeah, you did. And then big numbers. I don't know what's crazy. Big numbers. Let me let me be like Odu Odu. <laughs> big numbers. Oh my god. <laughs> Prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> All caps. <laughs> no cap. Big numbers. <laughs> and then some guy was like, they are one ninety countries in the world. He was countries. actually on the show. He was actually on the show. There are one ninety five countries, 195. and your stuff was one hundred and eighty three. Oh, and like, the perspective blew your mind. I was like, oh, wow. This is so funny. Can you see all the parallels? This person that tells Saints we said this is the fan on the fan episode of this season of Is This Is Take. Oh shit. You've touched on this a little bit, but what's your relationship with failure like? Because failure is inevitable. I hope you know that. Uh, I hope you know that. I'm trying to learn, but I, it's so hard because mm. like, I, I don't want to fail. And that's yeah. something Saz has tried to teach me. Yeah. But I don't, I, 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 I you don't want to learn. You have not learned it yet. <laughs> that's why I haven't dropped my project because like, I don't think I'm ready yet. Mm. Yeah, but like, you're overthinking it. Yeah, I really Because am. you know what? If your first project is your best project, then where do you go from that? Hmm. You have to give yourself, it's like Zinoleski said, I left those posts on my Instagram. <laughs> so you can see Actually, there was a turning point. Yeah, 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 yeah. A big part of this work, I feel like you have to become comfortable with being a beginner, man. Because you have to begin in so many aspects. Whether that's like scale, whether that's like range of what you're doing. Or you just have to be a beginner. So you have to give yourself that grace. You've already proven yourself. You have nothing to prove again. If that I, makes I sense. Have everything to prove. You don't have anything to prove. And you have to give yourself space to, like I said, grow. If your first project is your best project, then what next? I keep getting better. That's the tragedy. The Start so that you can keep getting, getting better. better. Instead of waiting to be the best hmm. before putting it out. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? The words by Chini. Period. Sheesh. Her. Oh, she looks so nice. I can't even lie. Damn. Mm. Damn. Chelsea. Chef. Producer. Songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> Accountants. No problem. Let me not say one thing. Mega no chicken, problem, though. No Shout problem, out. What no to mega chicken? No problem. No problem. What would you say the biggest change to your life has been post Twice as Stone? I thought you said this was not an exam. It was not a what? Was that an, 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 an exam? Uh, exam. Is it an exam? Is this an exam? Because it's a lot of. Uh, you have to think. You have to talk Chill. about your journey. People that are like. Tails, that's my goat, Baba. Let me figure out. <laughs> let me figure out exactly ah. what Tails did. Let me do it. Because the truth is. I think that's my biggest. What you, you call it? What's the question? What's the question? I have the answer for you. What's the question? Biggest change in your that's life. The biggest change. Realizing that you put that. Yeah, I meant to. Yeah. yeah. It's a big deal. And I think we're in a place where like it's more normal for people to be producers, X, Y, Z. But guy, one generation ago, this wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important for people that are in your spaces to demystify the process as much as possible, right? So the other people that are coming up, that's how the industry, you know, continues to grow. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. It's just crazy because, um, it's crazy because I never ever, like, saw this coming. Yeah. Like, till today, I don't even say I have fun because I just find it funny. Yeah. I don't know. I got, like, I still think, like, I'm just a regular guy. So having to, like, be around people that tell me, oh, I look up to you, oh, this and that. Like, wow. Same. Yeah, my boys have been saying that, like, if I wasn't in my, like, shoes, it's such a lovely story, like, my, like it my is. come up. It is. Because, you know, guys were hustling. Guys were hustling. Should I ask you a question that you should? Yeah. Describe tales in three words. Accurate. Like this shot. Hey. Don't be insufferable. Go to the next. Go to Accurate. <laughs> hmm. Okay, that's number one. Number two. Sharpshooter. That's two words. So give us one word. Accurate. I'm still doing it. I wouldn't say playful. That's your business, you but it's say factual. Playful, and that is fine. Uh huh. What's the What's the third one? Hmm. Sweet. Are you describing the food to yourself? Well, both of them. <laughs> I think it's um, common knowledge that a lot of creative people struggle with imposter syndrome. Is that something you've ever faced? No. I don't struggle with anything. Mm. 
What would you say it takes to be good at your job? Um, music theory. Music theory. Yeah. Explain for the layman, for English speakers. Um, just knowing like music and like how to do certain things that revolve around music. You can't mm -hmm. just say, "Oh, I feel like making beats. I would love to make beats and just start." You need to understand music before you actually learn how to, you know, make beats or produce. Yeah. Um, and also discipline, as something I'm still working on. Yeah. Because the more you make beats, the I just realized actually, the more you make beats, even you still be that realizing. The more you make beats, the better you get. Yeah. Because um. Like you're doing something every day, you're going to get better at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, discipline, how to sit down and actually work. Yeah. Outside of music, what would you say are your creative interests? Why did you blush to that question? I don't understand. Uh, can't you see what is going on? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, love that food. You produced a shower for Fireboy, which tracks? Um, oh. Is there anything about that song you feel like you can relate to? I, there is nothing. Mm. It's, it's, really, it's so true. Why do you think you're the producer for that? In fact, I'm like, ah. Uh, Wow, what a song. I didn't even know anything about it. I've never ever met Fireboy before. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I was like, bro, like, you see, now this song, we, because, like, first of all, I'm not that person, right? Um, Which person? As I was saying, um, the song does not have anything to do with me. Maybe him, but not me. I'm not that kind of guy. How did that collaboration happen? Uh, with my lawyer. Mm. Yeah. Most amazing person Jimmy. in the world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She got me in a session with him and D Smoke. Oh, really? Yeah. That's we, cool. yeah we did a song, um, Sleepwalking. Mm. And then after, he, I think he yeah, reached out to him and then I bro, like, let's do something, but, you know, for, like, for us. Yeah. Yeah. And then, that happened. Mm. Very, 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 very stressful session because Fireboy is a perfectionist. Yeah, you can do a million songs and you might just pick one. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same for you, but I find that in this line of work, people love giving you advice. We just love giving you advice. So I want to know what's the best advice you've received and the worst. So when I told Saz that I wanted to drop my project, yeah. I was scared. Mm. Just ask me, what do you have to lose? That sounds like a small thing, but like, what do I actually have to lose? Exactly. Yeah. I feel like that just really helped me with like, my thought process on things. Because like, yeah. at the end, like, if I drop it, what, what do you like, actually have to lose? I have songs out, okay? Already. Yeah. So like, what next? There's nothing. If they don't become global hits, what next? Like, it's not that crazy. Yeah. Um, The worst advice anyone has given me is when um, I can't remember the guy. Some guy was like, so when to us, a store had dropped. And then I wanted to like work with other artists. He's like, bro, you don't deal with Bonner already. You're not supposed to. Be. And I took it, but it fucked me up because like, mm. you can't put yourself, you can't tie yourself to one artist because yeah. you're the producer, you're not the artist. The artist can decide to drop the song whenever. Yeah. So you are just there waiting yeah. for the artist to drop at any time. So that's not really a good thing to do as, an, as a producer. Has being a full-time producer ruined how you listen to music? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I can imagine. Because, like, no matter how good a song is, if the beat is not good, I don't like it. Mm. No matter how. What's the dream for you? Like, what's your ideal outcome out of all of this? To make money enough to change the world. In what ways? Um, I'm not a saint. I'm not anyone's savior, right? Yeah. But um, I believe in God. Yeah. I believe God put me here for a reason. Yeah. I believe God gave us everything we have. So I would like to give back. So Blessed like, to be a blessing. Obviously, like, on my selfish side, like, I want to make en enough money to travel the world. Yeah. But then it's not as important as helping people. Or just See that thing Mr. Izzy said, like, if... If the whole community is rich, there will be no thief. Yeah. Makes so much sense. It does. People are angry because they don't have money. I know. 
I think obviously now that you've, and you've kind of touched on this as well, having achieved success, that has obviously changed your creative process a little bit. But in terms of how you approach making beats, is it still just like, okay, I make beats every day, I make beats with artists in mind, I hear something, it inspires me, or it's just like a mix of all those things? No. You hear something and it inspires you, and then you're like, okay, let's make something. I don't make beats for any artists again. Yeah. Artists are wicked. Because <laughs> they drop when they want to drop, so like, I don't even depend on artists anymore. I just, yeah. I just make beats on them. If you hear it and you like it, no, I like it. If you don't like it, no, I like it. And obviously, at this point in your life, you've achieved a lot. So, yeah. you know, you have people looking up to you. You have people that this is what they want to do in their life. What would be your advice to people that want to follow a similar career path? Every human being is different. Yeah. You know how they say time waits for no man? Yeah. I don't believe that. I have been producing for 12 years now. You know, and then like this is like, aside from being playful, I've been producing for 12 years and I wanted to quit. In 2019. 2019, but like, things started popping up in 2020. That's nine years after. Like, it's not... It's not a day. It's not yeah, over 19. Yeah. Obviously, like, it's a workout for some guys where you just start making beats today and then next week yeah you're famous or whatever or you have money or some shit but like i feel like everyone has their own their own time and yeah. what, what i've seen or from what i've actually seen in this world everybody has an opportunity to make it mm. you might not think it's your opportunity that you just miss it yeah like there is something that will happen in your life that will make you actually like see that oh yeah is this the point where i go further or do i just ignore it yeah and i am very very if I want something, like if I, if I want something, I'll go for it. Yeah. If I see a chance to be better, if I see something that will change my life, I'd rather die than miss the opportunity. Yeah. So I feel like everyone just needs to chill. Their own time will come. Yeah. I'm going to get bigger than this Her. easily, right? So I know that time is coming. I'm not going to stress. Russia, exactly. Make food. <laughs> I think there's opportunity and there's being ready for opportunity. And I would definitely say that that's one thing that has, that stands out to me with your journey, right? Because one thing to want things, one thing to desire things, but it's like you really have to be ready for what you're asking for, right? You just ready for what you're asking for. But at the same time, you can't get there and allow whatever pressure collapse you. Mm -hmm. So drop the project. Hmm. Nice. Drop the project <laughs> while waiting. Funkila, yeah. Bonkila, Bongila. We Next go jam year. Next year. Did you get it? Next year. Okay, good. Hold him to that. Next year. Hold him to that. It has been an absolute pleasure having you. Thank you so much for making this lovely yeah, spread of food. Pleasure having me too. Look at boys. <laughs> okay, is that all you want to say? Boys don't do this. Is way. that all you want to say? Oh, you, you want me to say you have been... Uh, okay, have you not had a good time? I've had a good time making the food. And... With you, Chinasa. Thank you. Wow. What, right. does, what does Chinasa mean? God answers prayer. Why can't I ask you questions? Why must you ask me questions? You can ask me questions. Okay. And I just answered it. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. So if I'm like, Chinasa, that means God answers. Oh, God answers prayers. I'm trying to do something like once, once a month. Yeah. Or once in two weeks. Mm. Where I just like work with like new artists. Because like obviously like, there are people that there are so many people that want to work with me. Yeah. I should believe that don't have the money. That opportunity, yeah. Yeah. So no, no more day. I want to start something where I just like say, oh, yo, like I just post like videos of let's say three beats, and like people just pick whichever ones and like you know come up with the best song, and then you come to my house, record the song, spend the whole day with me. My life is interesting. I can't lie to you. Definitely more interesting than yours. Look at this shit. Um, so yeah, um, please tell us, don't speak to my fans like that. No problem, fans. My life is more interesting than yours. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, you spend the whole day working with me. I like playing games, I like, I like living a good life, right? So I just want to, like, be able to share that experience a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. What games do you like playing? Besides the one we know you like <laughs> Besides those uh, games. Uh, uh, those games are FIFA and GTA. Yeah, the one that's... But you're not a teacher. 
Chinessa. God I, I like that too. You know something I just realized? Tell me. Teachers in Nigeria mm -hmm. didn't go to school to learn how to teach. Of course not. They're just people. Economic circumstances carried them there. That went to school. <laughs> How hard is it to tell if so like do only primary school two plus two is four? If you're teaching primary school. I'm sure my teachers in secondary school are not that crazy. No offense. Yeah. I think I'm doing Nigeria's hard because you're not paid well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have the resources, you don't have the support. Try. The whole country is a tragedy. I want to be a teacher, I'll be a very terrible teacher. I was a teacher. Oh yeah. For a year and a half. Mm. What did you kindergarten? I can't do that. I'm not patient. Guy, right? let me tell you something now. I, I could have sworn that I can't do it. I applied for teenagers. Because like I said, I want people that I can level with to an extent. Mm. Oh, but they gave me kindergarten and I found myself there. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. I surprised myself. No, I'm not that guy. Life will put you in situations that you have to swim. God forbid. Or drown. That, uh, God forbid. That's life though. It's, it's, mm -mm. Not, it's not... That's the life you are imposing on Growth you. requires discomfort. Are you sure? Are, are, are you guys hearing this? Mm-hmm. No problem. You can't predict life, so you have to be ready for anything. Yeah, I can't and you're talking, life. but no, anything, you're ready for it. Artist packaging. Okay, yo. So I'll say sign for artist packaging, so I'm going to join you. I'm not an artist, I go. As we sign out, uh, we say Love you guys. You. God bless. Oh, look. Thank you from Tells and I. Yeah. I'll leave you over to Tells to continue. Um. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have anything to say. I love you guys and thanks for watching our episode. Check tells his Twitter to see his real personality. That is not my real personality, but check. Mwah. Yeah, tells let's do a hat to end. How? I'm a bad guy. Love and yeah, now. Bad guy, but stop, stop, stop. she cannot do hats. How now? Talking about Lunity is kidding. You can stop now, stop now. Oh, do, oh yeah. At this packaging. Just do the hat to me. Do the hat to me. We're waiting. Cameras are really not. This thing is costing us money. Let's just do like this. What of just this? Okay, how about I just do this? <laughs> that one is PVC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about potato puffed chicken? Or chicken potato puffs? Or potato chicken puffs? Or puffs chicken potato? Puffed chicken potato. Okay, so is puffed. puffed. Or is it chicken or potato? Is the potato is puffed. The chicken is inside. The chicken is the chunks. So they so they puff the chicken. No. No. They only puff the potato. Potato has so, more body than chicken. Now. So it's puffed potato, the chicken. Yeah. Yes. So you could like. Okay. Add it up.